Food is one of my favourite things and um, I, we, at Jean Hales, one of my jobs is that I get to create recipes and my recipes in the Jean Hales kitchen have a simple motto of simple, nutritious and delicious. So you don't have to be a master chef and you don't have to go and buy 15 different ingredients. And the whole idea is to make food and nutrition accessible and there's always a health message in that as well. So um, what, what do we know about the recommendations? What, what are we told that we're supposed to eat? So we used to have a pyramid, a food pyramid, which is right out now. And this is what the Australian government tell us to eat. And what I want you to take from this slide is that try and fill half your plate with vegetables. That's the main thing. What I'd really encourage you to do is really have a look at the Mediterranean diet. The, the Mediterranean diet over and over keeps coming up as the diet with the greatest amount of evidence to help us prevent dementia, cardiovascular disease, help with resilience is some of the issues that are coming out now. And it really is quite easy. It's a, basically a whole food diet. So on the bottom, interestingly, is not food. It's about eating with people. So the whole idea, I, I grew up in the country with one of five. Yes, we were Catholic and I'm also Italian. But food, food was a, a big part of our life. And at dinner time, we all got together and eat. And we usually had a neighbour or someone else. And that was the time, no television, where we got to share things that happened during the day. So for that, that's not only just the sharing of food, but the sharing of experience. And the most important part of which all your... Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, the most important part of what our meal should be based on is vegetables, fruit, whole grains, legumes, seeds, nuts, herbs. And we get a bit confused, you know, should we be paleo, should it be high fat, low fat, no carbs, no carbohydrate, you know, no, no, um, no bread. It can all get a bit confusing. But if you look at the evidence, this still comes up as being quite useful. Now, there's carbs and there's carbs. There's donuts and there's right brown rice. So that there, there is a difference. And what you need to be choosing is the right type. Yes, the donuts you'd prefer? Yes, that's a sometimes food. And sometimes we indulge in that. And so the Mediterranean diet is really important and I will draw on this quite a bit. The other thing about that bottom level is that they're the foods that tend to be the ones that feed our gut microbiota. So you hear a lot about this now, our gut is often called now the second brain and we have this connection between what goes on with our gut and our brain. In fact, you probably know about serotonin, it's a chemical in our brain. There are more serotonin receptors in our gut than there are in our brain. So more and more what we feed our gut is important, not necessarily taking the probiotics, but feed what's there and it's whole foods, fruit, vegetables, whole grains and polyphenols in these brightly coloured vegetables are really important. So the way I'm going to talk about um, food today, we know that food is not only important for helping us to stay vital and stay well for our wellness, but it's also really important for, for preventing chronic disease. A lot of the diseases associated with the Western world today. And we know something like with cardiovascular disease, 80 to 90% of it is preventable by diet and exercise. So not, not smoking, moving and eating the right foods. 10% is about with genetics and we can't do much about that. <clears throat> so these are in no particular order. But the first one, again, what I try to do is make things accessible. So this is linseeds, also known as flax seeds. They're the little brown seeds that are really hard to grind in your grinder, but they are very important to grind because you need to break down the outer shell to allow some of the ingredients, some of the active constituents to be accessible. So they're really rich in omega-3 fatty acids. They're the type of fats we try and get from fish, and these are the precursors to that. They're also really high in fibre, the right type of fibre, and they're high in, also in phytoestrogens. So phytoestrogens are a plant estrogen which can be quite useful. And one of the things that we do at Jean Hales is I've created a recipe based on having two dessert spoons of linseeds a day because we know that can improve vaginal dryness. Now, in-house, they're known as our juicy vagina muffins, but we don't put that in print. <laughs> and, and they are actually quite delicious. So I think we've got a picture of that somewhere, Lockie. Yeah, so they're our juicy vagina muffins. And my five-year-old son does eat them as well, and he certainly doesn't have a vagina, although he would like to. <laughs> the, the second one that I would talk about is yoghurt. Now, again, no dairy, dairy. You know, there is really good evidence for having cultured milk products in our diet. 
And if you look at the Mediterranean diet, very interestingly, a lot of the time what they're using is sheep's and goat's milk dairy products, and they are made a little bit differently. I was reading something yesterday about a paper of translating the Mediterranean diet for the Australian diet, and they talked about yoghurt, and they decided that they would talk about having low-fat dairy in this particular paper because the way that traditional methods of yoghurt were made was allowing the cream to stay in there rather than putting the cream back. But yoghurt is a great food. It is a source of probiotics if you have one that has one billion per serve. So the, the labelling's changed and we don't need to specify what's on the label anymore. So if you're wanting to use it as a probiotic, it needs to have one billion bacteria per serve. It's a great source of protein and a really good source of calcium and it is associated with reduced risk of type, type 2 diabetes. Now the next one, and now this is, if you've in your bag today, I think you've got a recipe in, the, in our magazine and this is one of the recipes with the breakfast topper, the breakfast brain topper. And that's actually combining the two dessert spoons of linseed that's got some sunflower, um, some walnuts and blueberries as a nice way of also having for breakfast. Now sardines. <laughs> Most people are averse to the sight, the smell or the taste of sardines. These are one of the best foods you can have. They're less than $2 a can. They're really rich in the omega-3 fatty acids. A tin of cal calcium is better than taking, you know, it's about the same amount of calcium as taking one of your caltrate. And they're a sustainable fish as well. So what you need to do is mix it with something as equally as strong. So again, one of the recipes we've got is sardines on toast, where you mix it with hummus and some uh, flat leaf parsley, a bit of onion if you can tolerate onion, and some... Uh, also some cherry tomatoes, or you can mix it with marinated feta. And it, it is, we did a little taste test out of 20 women in the, in, the, in the office. Everyone, even those who didn't like sardines, ate them. My next one is prunes. Yes, prunes, they're not very sexy, but they are, again, inexpensive. They've got a lot of those type of antioxidants that you find in blueberries. So instead of having to spend $8 a punnet, you can spend $3 on a packet of prunes, have three or four a day, really good for your bowels, and they also give you some of these really great antioxidants, and they are an okay source of iron as well as far as a non-meat source goes. This recipe here is actually a prune ball, so you often see those raw cacao balls, and this is like if you want your chocolate fix at night, instead of sitting on the couch <laughs> and having your, your cake, this actually does give you a chocolate fix and it's mixed in with the prunes and the raw cacao. Again, you can find these recipes on the Jean House website. So broccoli, what I would say about broccoli is that it's this whole broccoli family that tends to be really good for women. So broccoli, bok choy, kohlrabi, um, Brussels sprouts, rocket, bok choy, I said bok choy, and the, the cabbages. So what we know is these women who eat these foods, they can be associated with decreased risk of some cancer. Also, men who eat these foods, it's also associated with certain redu reduced risks of some cancer. And they do actually help the way that the liver properly detoxifies um, things. So detox is a bit of a buzzword, but this is actually in true liver detoxification and they're a great source of nutrients. Now this little slide says, did you know that high nut consumption is associated with low, lower cardiovascular risk and all cause mortality? And the little badger, I think it is, says, do you think I eat these things because they taste good? So what we do know is a handful of nuts are, is associated with a reduced risk of dying of anything that pretty much, you know, cardiovascular disease and also um, uh, strokes, less so with stroke. But a good handful of raw unsalted nuts are a great one to have and they fill you up. One of the things nuts do is they fill you up so you're less likely to have the big snack. Almonds are probably the best all-rounder. Walnuts are also good and macadamia nuts are good for the omega-3s. Whole grains, yes, so do we eat carbs or do we not eat carbs? If you eat carbs, make sure they're whole grain. So one of the things you can do is get rid of white. You know, my, my daughter always complaining, why can't we have saladas? And I said, one day you'll thank me. And so, you know, you're having, you're having the whole grains. So if for each serve of whole grain, equivalent to a bowl of porridge a day, decreases your risk of cardiovascular disease by about 5%. So that doesn't mean have five serves of carbohydrates a day and not have your vegetables. You, you've got to put it into context, but make it whole grain. Brown rice, having things like barley and also um, the oats is in porridge or also as a muesli. 
and there's a couple of recipes there that you can look at. So the, this is a, a soup. It's a Mediterranean-inspired minestrone soup, which has got soybeans in it and also a barley for the whole grains. And that brings me on to legumes. So in the, in the Mediterranean diet, they suggest that you have legumes at least twice a week as part of a, a way of eating. Now that could actually be, in Australia, baked beans on toast. But it could also mean that you're putting legumes into your soups, making up a salad at lunchtime. They are cheap. They're a really good source of fibre. Yes, they can cause a bit of wind with some people. Uh, canned ones can often be better in that regard because they often reduce some of these indigestible fibres that create some of the problem. They're low GI, which means you have them for lunch and instead of blood sugar going up and crashing, it's nice and sustaining. And if you combine them with a seed or a grain, then it makes it a complete protein. And this is one of our most popular recipes. It's actually a legume, it's a chickpea and sweet potato patty, which was uh, quite nice and very easy that you can look at. Now, one of the things that comes up over and over again as a benefit in the Mediterranean diet is extra virgin olive oil. So what I'm saying is there should be no other oil in your house except extra, extra virgin olive oil, maybe a bit of macadamia nut oil. We get bamboos that, oh, I need to have this one because it's got a, a high cooking point and I need to have this one. The evidence is for extra virgin olive oil. So buy the best quality that you can get and don't be scared with using it. In this translation of using it in the Australian diet, three to four tablespoons a day. So that's quite a bit, yes. So don't be scared with using it. Dress your salads, cook with it. As long as you don't overheat it, it actually is quite stable to cook with. And the last one, which I think is quite valuable, is the value of a cuppa. You know, the going over and having a cup of tea or whatever it is with your girlfriend and, and go over things. Getting a nice, a beautiful cup and saucer and sitting down at the end of the day with a nice relaxing blend instead of going for the wine on some nights. Yeah, I know, I'm a party pooper. <laughs> During the weekdays at, at least. This, um, I think one of, we've got a prize donated by Love Tea, which is a local company here, and they do some beautiful blends. I had one just before, and you know, the, the lovely ritual of sitting down with a nice tea just as a way of treating yourself. That's about as close as I get to meditation. You know, I have two children too. Um, and... I just need that, oops, I've gone too far. So just remember the take home message, make sure that the really important thing, it's not rocket science, it's really just filling half your plate with vegetable. So if that means you can't do it literally on your dinner plate, you know, I'm often eating a carrot as I'm getting dinner ready. It's where you can fit it in. Dry vegetables with your hummus or whatever it is. Having vegetables at breakfast if you're wanting your eggs, eggs, tomatoes and having the spinach. Invest, you know, I see this as an investment. I know we're all time poor and it often takes, you know, I'm getting, it needs time and energy to get the shopping done, getting everything ready and have the food preparation, but it is an investment in your health. And so I encourage you to do that. Just remember, have a little bit of inspiration from our kitchen. It's very easy. The, the messages are simple, nutritious and delicious. And these things need not be expensive. You don't have to get seduced by whatever the latest fad is which often doesn't have a lot of good nutritional and evidence base to it. Use some of these foods as a way of starting and just start with one simple change. It might be breakfast or it might be the cup of tea at the end of the day. You don't have to make huge changes all at once, but just choose one to start with. So hopefully that's inspired you to do that and enjoy the, the rest of the night. Thank you.